today we are going to start one another episode on youth especially focusing on the women women especially from african region and today the chapter will be sudan i'm from sudan we are having wafa talha she will tell how she is facing those uh, the challenges on the ground how she is motivating others and how she has become like a game changer for sudan so let's welcome wafa wafa uh, you are there uh, and you are creating lots of change in the youth among especially the females those who are aspiring to be like entrepreneur those who want to bring the change in the community in the society so how do you uh, start this journey how how you got motivated from to do something for the women in sudan Good morning dr shahid uh, actually in uh, early 2009 i was thinking about how i can help uh, women and girls in my country the idea of how to support my the women and girls in sudan i have it long time but i thought i have to support this with course, courses and really study this why i attended the course in india in empowerment of women through enterprises and i think to have your own business business this is the good way for the women to to be upliftment and to to be independent financially and economically and i was looking for a way how can i do it especially in sudan we are going through uh many difficulties we are going through new government a revolution many things the country is not that stable at that time which is like one year ago and i was thinking for a way to do this and to to establish humanitarian organizations ngos this is the only way i can uh bring my ideas to the to the to the to the real land to become true i was thinking about this deeply and this really was my main issue at that time the only way to do this was organization to establish organization and we decided this we decided to open organization carrying same name and their same activities and we follow or will be under one constitution and i thank god they accept the idea and all of them was with me in the same line which is a sister from losoto and sister from zambia we started our meeting and i remember at that time we are we were in mysuru we contact you to ask you for we contact dr shahid from asmb to ask him about something many thing ambiguous for us we have to clear it and i remember he give us a big big support and big hands and he asked us how we can do this and how we can work for the youth and women in our country and i like the idea of asmb working through social media and we make our one of our activities we took one hour of our objectives from his talk being in sudan and uh, as a female youth how do you see the change you know that what you actually the youth wants in sudan after the uh, the old government has been replaced with the new one what are the main aspiration that what youth want especially for the as a priority okay actually sudan revolution uh is is a new revolution and it's unique it's unique for us before the revolution sudan was different country after the revolution sudan is the new country totally women they have a strong role they have a main role in the sudan revolution the they 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 stood side by side with men the the look and the understanding of women role in sudan is completely changed after the revolution we consider the, after the we consider sudan after the revolution is a new sudan it wasn't like before the youth uh the even the understanding for the people it changed the families they allow ladies to protest in the street they allow ladies and women and girls and they use to be to spend days in the sit in area while we while we fighting the outgoing regi- regime while we resistance while while we we 
uh, we try to change uh, the, the system in Sudan. Women and girls and youth, women, especially youth, they stood side by side with men. And I see the street mentality, little bit change, little bit start to move on toward the right side, the right way, little bit, uh, women, men accepted the idea of women. They can be with them. Uh, they can be with them. They can they can be support to them. This one of the things it let, it let me to to encourage and to uh, to stand up for for women in Sudan. Many of the ladies, many of women, they start up their own business in with the after the new government not after uh, the new Sudan. They start their business, the, the, the entrepreneur women, they become active and the youth, they feel they have more freedom to, to change their life. Because I'm not gonna say before uh, there is restrictions, there is many things, there is the youth facing many things. Even, even the, the youth, the educated one and non-educated, they have formal education, they don't, then they don't have formal education. All of them, they restricted same way. You cannot do anything. After the revolution, after the new Sudan, we are new, we are different people. Even ladies, they are different. They come out, they come up with the new ideas. They know they are encouraging to open their own business, they to have their own money, to take care of the family, to take care of the kids. They feel like they have a role. They feel like they have a responsibility. This, there is many things change after the, the new Sudan. As you told that the, there are lots of new changes happened after the revolution and the people are now more free to work and explore an idea. And we know that Sudan is a full of rich culture, rich tradition. You know that in the world, people really like that kind of rich tradition and culture. But why they are not very much, you know, uh, connected to the... Uh, tourism. It's like tourism is also one sector that can be revived. People can come and just uh, invest money or just go for the traveling, go for watching the uh, culture and tradition, having the experience there. Why it is not happening? Is the government is not supporting or focusing on the tourism sector or to promote culture through the technology or in the social media is how they are lagging behind because other parts of the world, they are using this kind of techniques. Why the Sudan is not able to do that? No, we are able to do that. Look, uh, here in Sudan, there is the diversity. We are more than uh, 500 something tribes. We have many different language. We have many accents, even in within one country. And all this diversity, after the revolution, we try to live in peace. And we thank God we are going to the right uh, direction. Uh, in Sudan, we have um, the, the new government actually, it, it, it take care of the folklore, it take care of the culture, it take care of the youth, the youth involving in their programs. The youth, because they realize even the revolution, the change itself in Sudan, it happened by youth. It happened by women. It happened by young girls and young men. Uh, the new government know the role of youth and know the role of the culture and they are fully supportive to this, but still we are young to be like the, the, the change to be clear and to be uh, known to everybody. But right now here in Sudan, we using our diversity to be one. We using, uh, we take care of this to 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 make a peace building between tribes, between uh, many, between the north and the, the 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 east, between the east and the south. We try to do this to be one Sudan, and I think we will succeed. We will success. You know, we will be uh, a, a good sample for all countries. As we, as we be the good sample for peaceful revolution in Sudan. We, we went through peaceful revolution in Sudan and we win in the end. We never face force by force. They are, we, they are very tough on us, 
and we are very soft and very peaceful with them and we win in the end same way we follow in our revolution in sudan we will follow to build our country we will follow to help women and youth to do this we will use the diversity we will use the culture we will use uh, our nice song to 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 build new sudan inshallah everything will be okay and i want to tell you the government is fully supportive this government this uh, this new government is fully supportive to the youth because the government itself knows it came to these seats by youth it comes to these seats by women and inshallah in the coming soon future the whole world we know how sudan is, is stood up or how sudan stand up again to be example for whole uh, the whole uh, world it globally will be uh, very you know optimistic about the new change and new uh, future but uh, as you told that you are, you people are creating one sudan you know for all over the country that people should just get united how it is possible when there are lots of tribes lots of different culture they believe in the kabaili thing you know the in kabilas uh, in an area and it was the biggest challenge you know to get united so that was the main reason that we read the history then we see that you know this uh, like very strong hold in their kabilas and other thing and that is the main reason that they are not able to identify themselves as one you know first they identify from the kabila and after that that the tribes and all so it's currently you had the youth festival also you know to showcase their own tradition you know so i wanted to know <laughs> few of them like you know that you mentioned uh, like there is a famous dance log sagaria sagaria dance that you uh, know that you know so i wanted to know more about it how that influence and how that is more connected to the other part of the, the sudan look we are in sudan we we'll feel like we are one family uh different tribes and different culture <clears throat> it never uh, become a problem for us this united us it's never separated us and uh, the culture and the way they dance the way they sing everybody for example if if you see a dance from darfur area all the people will be exciting and they want to know people in the east uh they, they they be exciting to know even me when i see dancing from the north i feel i want to know this never uh the way of dance or the culture itself give me a feeling like oh this is not my people no i feel like this me this me and we have to accept each other we have to accept the culture the diversity we have to accept uh everything and even we don't think about this we automatically the issue is running in our blood automatically you accept your brother me from the south i accept my brother from the east and i enjoy and i enjoy his culture and i enjoy the music with him uh, people from the north they enjoy darfur darfur uh, folklore i attended uh, as you mentioned uh, a festival culture festival of folklore festival two weeks ago and there is many tribes uh, participate in this event and all of us we enjoy this we enjoy the moment you see your brother you in, you you enjoy watching the whole sudan in one area you yeah. in, you feel you feel happy with that you mentioned sagria sagria actually from butana area which is east uh, east sudan uh, butana area it covers five states uh if you give me time i can mention uh red sea state khartoum part of khartoum state uh northern state river nile state northern uh, gadarif state kasala state red sea state khartoum and river nile state which is a botany area take part from this and we know when you see the outfit of the people from botany which in wearing the white and that small jacket and dancing sagria and everybody can recognize even from far oh those people from uh botana area and we are happy with that you see different outfits from darfur people dancing like jumping and stuff you don't see like this oh why why you do this this is a culture
I'll just want to, as you mentioned, that you feel excited when you see the different parts of the country. They are also the same blood and the same brother and sisters. They are uh, bringing the new culture or something that which is not known to you. So, but there is one another culture also that you know you people have accepted, especially the Sudanese people have accepted from Nigeria that Hausa, Hausa that you mentioned about it. So yeah. it's not about the Sudan; it's about Nigeria. Yes, uh, even me. Uh... I mentioned Hausa before, even me, I see Hausa tribe is a part of our community. It's a part of, uh, it's a part of Sudan. I'm not gonna say it's the main party, main part, but this tribe is spread out in Sudan, uh, is spread out in Africa because originally this tribe from Nigeria and West, uh, West Africa, it moves for commercial issues. It moves when we're going to Hajj uh, tribe, and because before they move long months, many months to reach to do their um, their cults in Saudi Arabia, while they do this, while they they going for this trip, they stop somewhere, and they found themselves settled. I don't know the history exactly, but I know how they come to Sudan, and we don't think Hausa or we don't feel Hausa is not a part of our country. No, it's a part of our country our country is a part of Sudan. Hausa, they don't have a, a main place in Sudan. They spread out of the, the whole country. They find, you find Hausa in, in uh, Red Sea State, which is in the east. You find Hausa in South Kordofan. You find Hausa in uh, Darfur er, uh, region. You find Hausa in Khartoum. You find Hausa everywhere. And Hausa tribe, they are acceptable. And by the way, and there is intermarriage, it's just, the intermarriage between Hausa and other tribes in Sudan. We live in peace with other tribe. We don't have problems and we accept, uh, we accept their culture, the way they dance. I, I, as we share the video of Hausa tribe, they have something different. They are unique. We don't see this different thing. It's, a, it's, um, it's something will put them away or to isolate them from the community. No, Hausa is a part of our community. It's a part of Sudan, and we're happy with that. We're happy with this diversity. Even me, when I see this, uh, uh, this kind of dance, this kind of uh, talent, this new thing, for me, like I see like something new for, for me and makes me happy. This is how we live in Sudan. We are happy. Uh, we, are, we are together happy. With this diversity, we are so happy. Hausa. Yes, we can tell originally not from Sudan, but we never feel this. Actually, we don't feel they are not part of Sudan because the whole Sudan is like that. The whole Sudan is different tribes, it's like that.
so uh, i was just thinking that you know you told that different tribes are different things because they also they originally are from nigeria and they came for the trade and other thing they got into sudani culture and they adopted this one and now they are the part of that so what about those you know kordofan that area with the kiran dance you told about you know oh. Wow. So that is what some interesting and another dance also that we will discuss how that has a resemblance with India, you know that. Okay. Some, so this is something unique, you know that being in Sudan, you are not adopting your own culture only. You are just even uh, taking the world culture, you know, into your own culture and just respecting them and in, encouraging them, you know, to unite yourself. How it is possible? Yeah. Uh, when you mention Kurdufan, I feel like I'm smiling because this way I born and way I grow up in North Kurdufan, uh, I'm actually not from that. I want to tell you the example. Me, actually, I'm not from that uh, re uh, region, North Kurdufan, at the at the at the region. Uh, and I born I am um, I born and grew up in Kurdufan. I'm not consider myself I'm a foreigner. I'm not consider myself um, a stranger. I feel I feel like I'm from that regime. I from that region. I feel like I'm a part of this. The outfit of the people. Even I remember when we are in um, elementary school, we dance with them. We don't feel like we are. Oh, originally you are not from this state. You don't have to share. No, we dance in the elementary school. We wear the their clothes, the traditional clothes, and we dance with them. Uh, when we come to your question, and the outfit, by the way, it's not just Sudan and, and India, the whole Africa, we like colors, we like accessories, we like to do this. I, I noticed this in India, and we have the same thing. Kurdufan and Darfur and many of, many of uh, states, in, the, in their outfit, they, they, there is similarity between them and India even the dance itself. For me, uh, when I see uh, Hausa, they, they sing a song, the tune exactly like, like Indian songs. The dance itself close to, to the Indian, the, um, the style of dancing close to the Indian style. And I shock because this first time in my life, I see Hausa, they dance, they, they have a dance close to Indian dance, uh, dancing. And for me, it's not strange because we all living in the same um, geographical uh, area. We share um, a same geographical area. We have same that we have. We we have common. We have a common ground. We have something we sharing together. When you come to the Kiran, Kiran actually this tribe is a Nuba tribe. Uh, the Kiran dancing for Nuba tribe from South Kurdufan. The way they dance. Uh, for me, it's not strange. I'm from Sudan. For you, a little bit will be a little bit. Um, it's not you are not familiar with it. But the real the the dancing is close to Indian dance. But the 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 way of dancing little bit faster, little bit faster, and uh, yeah, it's not that different. But you find some of the movements. They share some of the movement. They share some of the 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 way they they wear. The, the wearing, they share many things. And Kirin, uh, for me, I like this dance a lot. And we and I tried it before. I I tried, I experimented this before. And this with the people in uh, South Kurdufan. There is many similarities between Sudan and, and India in the outfit. There is many similarities between whole Africa and India. And with all this uh, um, different style, with all this different music, with all this different dance, we are we are enjoying each one culture. We are enjoying each tribe culture, each tribe dancing, each tribe music. And we are, as I said, and I keep I will keep repeat this. We are we feel united. We feel one one thing. If you ask me, Sudan is one tribe.
you told that you know it's one tribe but through the tribes we have explored that you have also influence of nigeria you have also influence of 
you know some uh, tribes which has some feeling of indian you know the uh, musical things you know now i can see the some other dance also in kordofan which is in you know, has the influence of arabic you know in arabic uh, music and uh, other things you know from the arab world so the music in kordofan it has some arabic mixture of you know the folk song and all okay yeah, so it's like though it's not about the only sudan it's you are covering whole planet you know india african other countries even even the middle east so how it is like more interesting and that much rich culture and rich tradition you have and still we are not able to the world is not able to know that what the things are there by i want to tell you something sudan is unique country not because of my country no we are african uh, i'm not going to say arab countries african arab countries but we mix in sudan we are african and one of the african country countries and we the main language is arabic and you find the combination in sudan like we are you can, um, uh, for me i don't feel like i want to say we are arab no we are not we are purely african but we speak arabic and you find some of the feature from the people from the north sudan they looks like arab uh you find some people in the south sudan they looks like african and we are african uh in in north kurdufan uh, you find you find this um this combination everywhere in 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 the whole sudan state you find arab and african east you find arab and african in kurdufan you find arab and african in the north we are we are like that in sudan we are like that we are african and we speak arabic and we have some of the we are mix you can find a music close to arab world as you mentioned and you you find also african style you find uh, i'm not <laughs> you find indian style also in um, in our music and I, i'm gonna i'm gonna back to the same square this differencing and this diversity and this many many uh, we many things it makes this sudan i can understand that you know that when you talk and your smile and uh, on the face it shows that how much you are uh, enjoying talking about your own culture yeah, and yeah i and love sudan so that. much yeah i love sudan so much and this how i'm always thinking how can i help do something tangible in my my community how can we we use all this to to make it flexible flexible to help us economically to help us to live in peace to 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 build a 
peaceful Sudan, to build a new good Sudan, to, to make everybody happy. We, I, I'm always excited to do this. This, this. this is even why I am doing this for the women in Sudan and for the youth in Sudan. So as you are more uh, uh, anxious about the future of the youth, and do you think that your same age of uh, female youth, those who are there also the, say, with, the, with the same passion, they also want the change for themselves and the, for the society, or it's, it's exceptional for you only? No, it's not exceptional for me. I think myself, I'm the last one joining this, uh, join this uh, exciting people or exciting women. Um, I think I, I consider myself, um, I came late, but it's better to come than nothing. Women in Sudan, they are willing to help. They are willing to work. They are willing to be independent. Women and girls in Sudan, they, they right now they realize their roles. They want to work. They want to do something. They want to do new thing for Sudan. I'm not the only one exciting. If you, if you, if you talk to any um, women or girls in Sudan these days, you will discover new thing. You will find, you will, you will know they are innovative. They want to do something. Even me, I, I took so many of my ideas from them. The, the women in Sudan, they are very grateful. They are very, 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 uh, there is no word even to say it about the women and girls in my country. They want to, they want to, they want to stand up. They want to tell the the whole world that we are here, we are capable to do this. We are qualified enough to do many things. And if you if you go to to the ground according to, to according to our work in the organization in Iwich, you will find you will find I'm not going to say even many. There is no there is no number to account those women. Many they have they are innovative. They have their own business. There are many entrepreneur women in my in in the community. This is why we making a uh, object, real object, to help them to encourage women. Uh, they are already have business. We are we are not the one who started this. It's already here in Sudan. It's already we have it in our community. So here you uh, you are explaining about the situation. It's very uh, very positive and very exciting. You know the, to hear yes. that all the things are like. Uh, very encouraging with the new government and people are more uh, eager to grow more in the future. But what happened during the lockdown, that especially in the corona pandemic, that is there any effect on the job opportunity or any support from the government or the financials, uh, you know, the economy of the country, it has been impacted badly due to COVID and other support from out of the, out of the country. Um, Sudan is like uh, any country in the world, it got affected by uh, COVID-19. And everybody knows that the whole world it is stopped for this pandemic. Uh, we got affected uh, in Sudan uh, with this one and the life stops, even the work, the working in the, the, with the government or private sector or um, organization, whatever. All this is, is, is stopped in, uh, in Sudan, like it, the economic affected like other countries. But what I wanna say is we have, uh, we are, <clears throat> we are, we are trying to stand up again. The, the, I'm not gonna say the pandemic came in, not in the right time with Sudan, but we, we just, we just trying to stand up from what happened to us, uh, in the last uh, 30, 30 years with the outgoing regime. And we try to recover from the sickness we have it. We try to stand up the, the pandemic happened. How do you think, because everything has changed, you know, people have started working through the digital, you know, working from home, you know, the behavior has changed. The people are not uh, in a normal way, you know, that they are not approaching the office. The offices are closed, you know, all you know across the whole globe, you know. So after that, how the situation has changed? Because Sudan is not that much uh, digitally empowered uh, country, and they are still having that, you know, uh, in a growing phase with the new government. So how you are handling those situations? Because there is digital in uh, that incompetency, or uh, people are not very fully digital. So how the things are moving? I just want to know about it. 
Okay, uh, let me let me take you to another way. Uh, uh, the whole world it start working through social media to to do online jobs. We are not in Sudan. Honestly, we are not familiar with this. After this pandemic, uh, they start to use the social media. They start to use uh, the web for for the business or for the work. Is is this uh, in the office or? Uh, a special business or private business. We start working online, do this from home, uh, as you know, the, after the, with the lockdown time, in the lockdown town, uh, time. But uh, the issue is not, not, it's not systemized from the government. This pandemic happened and everybody at home. But in Sudan, we are different. Uh, the people help each other by themselves. Like in the small community, you look for the poor people, they cannot, uh, they, especially the people they have um, their uh, livelihood uh, day, day after day, they earn money daily. Uh, I don't know how to say this, but they don't have a salary. The people, they are not working with, with uh, an institute that can give them the salary while the pandemic happened, while during the COVID-19, the people they work in the market, the people they have a small business, the people like that. But in Sudan, we cooperative strongly together to help uh, the, the poor families, to help the people they need help. We assist them, we assist each other, not with, not with the government, because the government, it has nothing at that time. It has nothing to give. The, the government, uh, promise people to do many things for them, but not not this time. Uh, uh, corona coronavirus or COVID nineteen, uh, it's not surprise us, but it came without any arrangement. It this happened, but the people help themselves, the the community, and by themselves they help they they work together to help each other. It's not something organized, but we receive some aids uh, aids from from, I don't know from where exactly, from outside the country, from some of the, the Sudanese living abroad, there is some, there is some assistance, there is some help uh, for, the, for the people in Sudan, but there is no something official or organized from the government. I don't think so. We're helping ourselves, we're helping each other. Okay, so now it's the time, you know, that uh, in the crisis that people are going shifting towards digital and all. And uh, you are more aware of, uh, because being in, in India and being a representative of uh, ASMP in the chapter of Sudan, you are more aware about how to use the social media and you are working on that. So do you think that the, all the youths, they should also learn the tricks, how to use it effectively and uh, do in business? in communicating, creating awareness, use the other technical platform for education. These are the things. Do you think that is it uh, worth uh, guiding the government, especially the government, they should take initiative to uh, give the training to the uh, uh, NGOs, like, you know, civil societies, they are working on the ground. They should get trained. And they are the government official also should be trained, you know, how to use it effectively, not only for their work, also for the schools, for education, for health system, for awareness. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me take point uh, after point with what you mentioned. First about uh, the social media, for me as a person, uh, wouldn't think social media is powerful to do anything before. After, after I met you in our first meeting in Nimis Main Institute in Hyderabad, I was thinking about what you said, uh, when you when you introduce ASMB uh, to us, Association of Social Media Professional, the name itself, it mean the name itself is, it it means something to me. The name itself is, is how how this guy making the social media something you can use it to change your life. This was a big question in my head, which is I remember this was the first day I put my feet in India. The same day I landed Hyderabad evening, we we met and we discussed this in our first meeting. And I carried this social media with my thoughts about how can I encourage women and how can I uplift men to change their life economically with me. 
and I put social media and web platform one of our objective. And ASMB for me is uh, was um, was something uh, special, and it opened my eyes to many things, and it um, it led me even to to give light to the social media to use it positively and many things many things i feel like it's a power for me so it's a hand i can use it yeah, carrying carrying this with me carrying the social media with me carrying asmb objectives with me uh, in my trip to help me this one thing uh, the other thing is um, what you mentioned um, uh, the capacity lady. building of the training in the health education okay yes. uh, about uh, training in our in sudan the government trying to help uh, uh, ngos in sudan but unfortunately the new ngos or the local or the national ngos in sudan the the international community which is give money and don uh, the donors for this organization to implement the project can the projects can help our community they don't trust them all this this the they don't trust them they work with the international organization not with the ngos and for me i think ngos the only way for the government to go to the to the community to deal with the with the, the needy direct because of the ex regime the outgoing regime the ex government uh there is no they don't trust them they don't feel like they are capable to do this they don't feel like we'll give them money to do this i'm suffering from this now we are a new organization and the community don't don't the, the international community don't help us until now even we try to meet with the government uh the government busy with many things i feel i'm not blaming them but i feel i'm a part i'm a part from this and i have we have to work together but about capacity building directly and training here in sudan we have something little bit different there is initiative they train each others they are they are groups and small initiatives and organization in small ngos they cooperate together they participate together to to lift up the the capacity building they train each other they 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 have workshops seminars uh webinars to tell how even me some of some of the information i take it from such a discussion with with other people but something official like in india to support the new organization by the way this one of the thing i like it in india there is central bank they help the new organization. There is organization uh, help the small organization. There is big institute. They they help you how you can start your business and how you can be good entrepreneur and how you marketing your products. This all this thing I think India is uh, is is ahead of us in, on these things. It's, it's really far. We are far. We are we have to work to reach this level. But here in um, in Sudan, still we don't have uh, something special for NGOs. Even if you meet another person, he's the head of NGO in Sudan, like me, he will tell you the same thing. We're suffering from this. And we wish if uh, the international community trust us and help us and support us to do, to implement all our objectives. And I want to tell you something. Uh, when I came from India, I was thinking about training. I want uh, the women in Sudan to have the same training I have it in India. I had I, 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 the course I attended in India. I feel like I want all women and girls to go through the same course I went through. I met the Indian ambassador in Sudan. And from here, I thank him a lot. And, and um, literally, I told him every organization is um, is is born in India. I feel India is the mother of this organization, and all I want from you to help us to help our capacity building. And I thank the ambassador. 
he he mentioned that um, he allow us he give you it opportunity to send uh, the people from Sudan to India for training to send women and girls from Sudan to India for uh, for courses to help them I think for me this is something special and this um, uh, uh, opportunity for women in Sudan to have this training to get this training from India side and India in all our details by in all our details and all our activities okay so uh, based on this you know as we discussed about the how the situation changed in covid how the government should act you know asmp has, is going to release one book you know which is very very deep study about how the organization has changed what are the precaution they should take what are the governments uh, should take a steps you know in recovering from those crises and all so it's going to be released very soon it's uh, that we have one book, it is going to be released and it will be available on Amazon also. I have uh, one, this is called oh, uh, yeah. Life. Life. Yeah, this, okay. this book, lockdown. you know, Life in Lockdown. Lock yeah. Yeah, it's uh, Life in Lockdown. It, is, it will be available on Amazon also very soon. And uh, this this has all the case study from across the world and which will be available on Amazon, Flipkart, whichever it is. So people can read it and understand it. So this was a very good talk till now and at last before concluding let me explain something to you dr shahid if you don't mind yeah uh, during the pandemic for us as iwich as organization we did uh, for me i think it's a big thing uh, we don't we 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 have a campaign a national campaign for covid-19 through the social media this one of the benefit i got it from asmb I have to work through the lockdown, uh, during the lockdown. <clears throat> I have to do something. I have to use the social media. You know what happened? We recorded 24 language from Sudan. Mm -hmm. 24 language from Sudan, from different re region. And the coordinators, the organization coordinators in the state helped me a lot. Actually, the work was, the whole work was uh, depend on them. We recorded for all the state in Sudan, different language as audio. And we put this audio in video showing some sub videos or some pictures to, to show the people how we can prevent ourselves and how we can, uh, how it's like awareness, <clears throat> sorry, awareness for the people. And we have a special, care about um, people uh, with um, the, 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 the disabled people, the, the mental, the mental uh, the people with mental disability, because they are, they are already locked down. They are already at home, not because of Corona, because of the, because of the, 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 the disability, they the disabled, the, the disabled, they have it, they already at home. This what they need. We need to to give advice to the family how they can deal with them, and and for me, I was thinking how can I reach each home? They have a person with disability, and we using social media to record, uh, to spread out our our um, campaign. We recorded as I told you the twenty four language is included also language for the communities living in Sudan, the other the other nationalities live in Sudan. We recorded for uh, in English with help with um, one of my colleagues in British uh, Embassy here in Sudan. We recorded um, for this uh, campaign in English language, in French language, with the help of uh, Gomorrah's uh, director for the organization. We recorded Indian language with help of my friend in India. We recorded uh, with um, Amharic for the Ethiopian, our brothers, Ethiopian uh, brothers live in Sudan, also for the Eritrean. We recorded many languages during the, during the pandemic. And this campaign is spread out of the social media. It, it reached everybody, I think, I'm not sure it's everybody, but we, we did this campaign through the, the social media. And also we, we, we recorded many audios to advise people how they can prevent themselves and how they can do this. 
social media or ASMB has the, uh, the uh, I don't know what to say, but this issue, this main thing, this thing is came from uh, ASMB. I tried to use the social media in everything during the lockdown. I trust, I tried, I tried to use the social media to to achieve one of my goals, which is use the social media positively. How to use the social media positively? Yeah. So thank you so much. Now I'll just conclude this discussion. Before that, I would like to hear from you that to know that what exactly. One second. One second. We can we can do something uh, because we don't mention how image is spread out and we don't mention this. We can we can talk about this. Yeah, no, uh, spreading uh, just uh, it is because already, uh, you can you can you can talk. We can talk uh, the how we the organization in Sudan how what the the the, the footprint in Sudan and Africa. I can tell you. So, uh, so be, before you know, concluding, just I would like to hear from you that what are the plans of the future to spread across Africa, not only in Sudan or Zambia or uh, any one other country, but across all fifty-four countries across Africa, and with the help of you, that how you can motivate others, women, girls, especially that you know, uh, youths youths, those who are working in the social sector, how they can be motivated, how you can channelize, what are the future plans? Okay, uh, I wanna tell you something. From the first day, from the day one, when I'm think about Iwich, when I think about to open organization, I uh, the idea is to open the organization in whole Africa, because we are in Africa, we need, we need this. We need to work for our communities. We need to help women and girls and the youth in our communities. From the day one, I was thinking about uh, Iwit to be in whole Africa. When when the Iwit, when our dreams come through and we open Sudan branch and right now with uh, Zambia after us and, and, um, uh, and we introduce Iwit to many countries and right now we have um, Mozambique under uh, Mozambique uh, under um, registration process and Chad under process registration process and Gomorros under pros, under uh, registration process also and Chad is uh, is uh, joining us recently like a month ago we are still doing the the procedure for them but our plan is Iwit to be in whole Africa, and for me, uh, we are we are newly newly established organization, but we want to start together. Even me, I think I'm thinking about all of us. We can start together. We want to work. We don't want to we don't want to compete with each other. I want Iwit to be in whole Africa. I want Iwit. Uh, my plan is less than two years or in the coming two years, I want Iwit to be in the 54 or 52 countries in Africa. I want Iwit to be, uh, I want I want Iwit to, to work with the same objectives. Everyone to work for his country. Each one to work for, for the women, for the girls, for the youth, because this our, this our, uh, our weapon, this how we can, we, how we can help our economic, our, our countries economically, how we can raise up uh, our economics. And our plan is Iwich to be in whole Africa. Uh, our plan is to work together for Africa. We wanna work for our communities. We, are, we don't wanna compete. This is why I don't care if when Zambia start the procedure immediately after us, when Ethiopia start the procedure immediately after us, we don't, we don't, I don't want to feel like there is a superior organization and there is one, no. I want Iwit to be in all Africa in the same times. We wanna to work together and stand up together in all Africa. Our plan to work in, for our communities, our plan to empower women, our plan to mainstream uh, the concept of gender equality, our plan to stop violence against women, 
our plan to 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 help women and lift uplift them economically because if you help women and they are independent financially you will you will guarantee the kids future you will guarantee uh, a stable family you will avoid many problems when you when you when the woman settle financially when the woman know that the main role for her the whole family will settle the whole community will settle the whole country will settle and this is what we want we start from this from the small level from the from the base which is the woman when we taking uh, we taking uh, the objectives and we taking uh, what we want to do step by step for when when we take care of this from the base with uh, micro small medium enterprises uh, you will guarantee a good life for women we will guarantee a good life for the community we will guarantee a good economic for the country and this is how we can settle and this is how we can live in peace because money is everything uh, i don't like the the philosophy that oh it's not money it's, no money is everything when you have money you have your own decision when you have money you will be independent when you have money you can do whatever you have to do you can help the kids you can help the education. When you have money, you will have good food. And you, when you have good food, you have good health. When you have good health, you will be capable to work, to be innovative. There is many things, but hunger and poverty, this is our first enemy in Africa. Our plan to everybody, we fight the, the, the hunger, we we will we are we are not we, we wanna we don't want poor people we don't want people suffering more we had enough in africa we have to we have to feel like what our plan everybody to satisfy our plan everybody to have his own money to have his own to 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 take care to to decide for himself our plan, everybody and all the women and girls to be independent. Our plan, all of us to exchange ideas uh, across the countries in Africa. For example, Chad, there is similarity between Chad and Sudan. There is similarities between Chad and between Mauritania and Sudan. There is similarities between uh, South Africa and Zambia. We, we want to exchange the knowledge we want to exchange the ideas of having new business. We want to exchange how we can we, we can support the entrepreneur woman because already there is women who start their own business. How we can give them new concepts, new new plan, new ideas to 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 go from level to level until until they reach the international market. I'm always taking India as example when I see Pachampeli. Which is the textile uh, manufactured in uh, in Hyderabad? I see in Sudan we have same resources. We can employ our local and international resources uh, to to establish the, the 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 enterprises, the small enterprises. If you know how to how to make cookies, why you don't make these cookies good and with the good quality with this to earn good money? If you are in Nigeria, you know how to do hand, uh, handcraft or whatever. Why we don't train them in this field to be more professional, to reach what they want to reach the level they like it? Uh, our plan, really, you touch me by this question. Our plan to stand up together. Our plan to to help uh, everybody to be independent. Uh, I want to tell you something. We following exactly what, what India following. The technique we following in which is self-help group. India, wherever, whenever you, uh, where, where we go in India, I hear self-help group. In, during the course, I hear self-help group. I did intensive study about what is self-help group. How can I take this self-help group technique from India in, to Africa? I took the same techniques India follow uh, to Africa, and inshallah, we'll 
will implement this, <clears throat> which is group of women, they choose themselves, we don't choose them. Uh, they are from the same level, the standard level are same, and from the same, <clears throat> uh, uh, same standard level, as I mentioned, to work together, they have the same hope or the same, this, for example, if they, there is a group of women, they, they like stitching, they like tailor, they like this, we'll help them, we'll train them. They have to choose themselves. We don't choose them. We don't ask them or order them, please do this, or you have to do this, no. We give them a right to feel like, uh, if like uh, you wanna do this, yes. Okay, we'll help you with this and this and that. Go ahead, because if she is not willing to do this, if she is not uh, she she is not patient to do this, how how she can change her life? She has to choose what she wants, and we are fully supportive to her. She has to choose what project or what enterprises she want to do it to change her life. Will support okay. her. It's like a very long plan that uh, you mentioned. It's like uh, very much possible if everybody uses uh, stand up together, support each other, you know, without any negative uh, competition or something like that.